Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to contribute to the motion on the State of the Nation Address by His Excellency Nana Ado Dankwa Akufo Ado. Mr. Speaker, on this fateful day, after His Excellency delivered his address, I had an engagement with my colleagues, honorable members, and the description they gave to his State of Nation address was that it is a, rhetor a rhetorical sonar address. Mr. Speaker, at that point, I was a bit confused. What do they mean by this? Then shortly afterwards, I got a call from one of my professors in a university who told me that, uh, Honorable, you people have finished with your sonar of convenience. And I got more confused, Mr. Speaker. So I decided to go into it. What is this state of nation about? When they say a state of affair or a state of something, what does that mean? So I cross check with um, Peter Britannica. I cross check with um, Oxford Dictionaries. Mr. Speaker, in the long run, I came out with a conclusion that when they say a state of something, it refers to a situation. It refers to a set of circumstances. For instance, a state of a vehicle. If you ask a mechanic to give you a state of a vehicle, what is the mechanic going to look for? What is the mechanic going to tell you for you to be able to understand the state of this vehicle? Perhaps the mechanic will talk about the engine and the body. Mr. Speaker, it's just like telling a doctor that give me the state of health of a person. The doctor will have a criteria, certain cardinal points, cardinal things that the doctor is going to look for to be able to advise you so that any time you pick that report, you know the state of health. In the same way, Mr. Speaker, if you ask somebody to give you the state of a business, the finance people are here. If they ask you to give a state of a business, Mr. Speaker, you'll be looking for the trading position. You look at the current assets, look at the current liabilities. You look at their cash flow projections. Mr. Speaker, you look at the where you talk about the current assets, current liabilities, fixed assets, fixed li and, uh, and, and fixed uh, uh, current assets. At the end of the day, Anybody who picks this information and can interpret these figures, interpret the financial figures, will be able to tell you that this company is doing well or it is not doing well. Mr. Speaker, now you, you, you realize that in 2020, His Excellency the President, in delivering the SONA address, he focused on the inflation rate, which he thought saying that it is the lowest ever in the history of Ghana. He talked about the GDP, the fiscal deficit to GDP. He also talked about the surplus, which he said in three years running, Ghana had run on surplus. Mr. Speaker, if you look at the SONA of 2021, conspicuously, whilst previously he was talking about debt to GDP ratio, this particular one was lost. And you find it difficult to understand why conspicuously, Mr. President, His Excellency, the President, did not talk about 
the debt to GDP ratio. And that is important because if you look at 20, 2016, his campaign was on board. So at any point in time, when he is coming to do the State of Nation address, we expect to see the net additions to our debt stock. So that at the end of the day, we just suppose that we have money for. Mr. Speaker, my understanding of our State of Nation address is an accountability document, accountability. At the end of the day, you should be able to account to the people who gave you the power and the mandate to rule. And this is what, Mr. Speaker, we didn't see in this budget. Mr. Speaker, in 2020, Sonam address. His Excellency, the President, talked about training, engaging 500 youth who were engaged in illegal mining. And they graduated, graduated them into vocations and similarly into technical institutions, giving them skills to be able to work. Similarly, he said in the same period, they were still in the process of training 607 more youth. And that was a way of taking care of the illegal uh, mining that were bedeviled with. Mr. Speaker, you start a project and you announce, you talk about it in your nation address. And the following year, that particular novelty, and I think this was a novelty that the president initiated. And it was a matter of course that at the end of the day, His Excellency should have given us an account of this so that we will see what dividends the nation has made. Mr. Speaker, this was not done. Mr. Speaker, in the State of Nation Address in 2020, he was commissioning 37 business resource centers. And the purpose of this was for the business resource centers to unearth the potential young business potentials in the country to be able to resource them, train them so that they can support in our development agenda. Mr. Speaker, this was another novelty. And he commissioned 37 and stated that 30 was in the process of being constructed. Mr. Speaker, and yeah, we expected that we should have known what was the state of the business resource centers. How many people have they trained? What is the value for money for, the, for, for our investment? All these things were things that we were expecting in the State of Nation address. Mr. Speaker, if you will permit me, I want to refer to page 12, paragraph 3 of the State of Nation of the State of Nation. Mr. Speaker, out and I read, our efforts at digitization is gearing steam. When my government assumed office in 2017, we were faced with the challenge of largely informal economy. The features of the informal economy included the absence of unique identification of, of citizens and residents of Ghana, and the absence of a working property address system across the country. Furthermore, only a small proportion of our population was registered by, by the Ghana Revenue Authority. Mr. Speaker, the interesting part, let me just move a little because of time. The interesting part is this one. He said 70% of the adults did not have access to a bank and financial transaction a financial transaction and they were dom and they were dominated by cash and the process of service delivery in most 
MMGs were largely manual and highly bureaucratic. Mr. Speaker, now, 70%, which means that now we are doing, we are able to register 70%, and these people are all involved in financial services, either in banks or doing more money. Mr. Speaker, you realize that in Ghana, if you look at, take all the banks together, all accounts in Ghana, if you add everything up, you will not even get one million people who are actively operating bank accounts. Mr. Speaker, my point here is that I expected the President to have mentioned the telecos. They have provided the vehicle for mobile financial services to be taken advantage of for us to build our digitization ecosystem. And Mr. Speaker, His Excellency the President did not mention this. Now, in conclusion. In conclusion, Mr. Speaker. In conclusion, uh, Mr. Speaker, His Excellency the President also talked about retooling the um, security services with SUVs, with buildings, and all those things. Today, I come from one of the new, newly created regions. Mr. Speaker, these vehicles did not get to all the newly created regions. I cannot say totally we did them, but at the end of the day, you realize that the challenge is still there, and these, these security services are under-resourced. To fight crime is a bit of a challenge for them, Mr. Speaker. So in conclusion, after the confusion and going through all the readings and all the research work, I realize that, Mr. Speaker, we can only urge the President to make SONA addresses developmental, to remain consistent in his approach, and to remain accountable to the people of Ghana. Mr. Speaker, until this, until this is done, Mr. Speaker, I will still say that the SONA remains rhetorical and convenient. Mr. Speaker, I thank you for this opportunity.